Hello, lovely people. Okay, we are going live and we are going to be cooking. Uh, we're not really cooking. Well, we are cooking. We're going to do some flatbreads with some beautiful whole wheat, sort of like flatbreads, tortillas. We're going to do some really healthy hummus and we're going to kind of put it together on a board uh, with a few nice things, some feta, little tomato salad. Very, very quick. And I think like, the thing to think about is hummus is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And here's the thing. Because the supermarkets have made it easy for us, uh, we've kind of got used to this stuff. Um, and it, it's okay, but it's not really my cup of tea. So if you've ever made your own, it's life-changing. It's absolutely delicious because you can flavour it, you can control the textures, uh, and there's a few little tricks to get really high-quality hummus. Now, there's lots of different variations on the theme. I want to show you, uh, show you. I want to show you a healthy version. So first trick is. The jarred chickpeas are incredible, okay? Uh, the ones in the tins are okay. Of course, you can get the dried ones and soak it and then cook it. But for a lot of people that are very busy, that's too much hard work. So kind of hunt out the jarred ones. They're gonna give you the most amazing flavor uh, and it's just gonna be much, much better. You can get these in supermarkets and delis um, and these jars are brilliant to keep for your preserving and stuff. So we're gonna go into there uh, we're going to lightly season it with salt, uh, some pepper. Uh, normally you put olive oil in there, but I want to kind of just pull that back and finish with olive oil. Um, I am going to go in with some lemon juice. Uh, maybe the, the juice of one to two lemons goes in, but just lightly flavoured with lemon juice, uh, just to sort of balance it. Now, as I said, you'd normally put quite a bit of olive oil in there. I'm going to finish with that, but I'm going to add a little bit of yogurt, okay, nice organic yogurt. It gives it that creaminess. Um, it's good to get dairy in the story if you're kind of looking at a kind of, you know, nice mixture of balanced food. Um, so I'm gonna use some lovely stuff in there. A couple of tablespoons goes in. And then we're gonna have a little whiz up. Uh, the kind of ingredient that a lot of people might not have seen before is tahini. It's basically a sesame seed paste. Um, you can get it in the supermarkets. A nice heaped teaspoon can go in. If you really can't find it, uh, a little bit of peanut butter is a cheat. Um, and it's pretty damn good. So let's whiz that up. It'll take a few seconds to get going. Um, you can give it a little shake. You can either have it chunky or really nice and smooth. They're always so noisy, these things. Um, just give it a little stir if it's not doing its thing. Sometimes it's nice having some smooth and some chunks. I quite like it when it's kind of silken. Have a look in here. Go on, big boy, get over there. Come around the side. So you'll see that come together. Of course, in the old days, they'd use a pestle and mortar. Um, taste it. That tahini's amazing. Uh, a little more seasoning. You can season it with a little cayenne pepper if you want as well. So just a few more seconds there. And I'm going to start making a flatbread. Very simple. It couldn't be simpler. No yeast. Just a little salt. Uh, whole wheat flour. Um, you don't really have to weigh it out, but about 80 grams per person. Um, I'll just do like a little double batch there. I'm going to add water um, until it just comes together as a dough. So, little water, just use a spoon. The simplest bread ever. The whole wheat flour gives it a little more complexity. You can see that's getting super shiny now. So of course, look, I love olive oil, you know I love olive oil, but instead of like, losing lugs and lugs and lugs in there, um, we're going to save it for drizzling on top and really appreciating it. Try and get yourself a cold pressed extra virgin olive oil. Um, this dough, like I said, is the simplest dough on the planet, just bring it together, um, you can knead it around um, and we'll just roll it out and we'll cook it on a griddle pan. 
Um, and it's kind of ready and raring to go straight away. Um, you don't have to really let it you know, rest or anything like that. So I'm just going to put this now onto the board. Uh, any questions from the lovely people that are watching? Uh, I like both. I mean, I think qu what's quite nice is um, I make a really lovely silken hummus, pour it over a surface, and then get some whole or crushed um, uh, chickpeas and almost dress them in lovely parsley leaves, flex a chilli, and then just fold that through. And I think, actually, this debate is really, really good because the whole point is if you create this base for hummus that's delicious... Uh, and of course, this expression of this dish is a healthy version, so we're just pulling out the amount of saturated fat, so not as much olive oil. Um, then we can kind of concentrate on, do we want herbs through it? Do we want to spice it? Do we want to kind of like chop up or puree up like beautiful grilled peppers and stir that through it? Uh, grilled vegetables, um, spices, you know? So there's so many options that you can do, uh, and they're super, super cool. So look, that dough that we've got, we've got two flatbreads right there. Uh, the only thing you need to do is just roll it out. Uh, you can go into a, you can turn it into a round if you want. It doesn't really matter. A little flour on the top. Uh, and kind of roll it out, I guess, as thin as you can, really. I mean, kind of, let's go about, say, three or four millimetres. Just flour as you go. And I've got a griddle pan on. Um, and this is, of course, best cooked on the barbecue. Any other questions, guys? Got a really nice one. So Char Johnson is just moving to uni and wants to know what are the essential foods she needs to buy in her first food shop. Ah, uh, okay. So of course you're going to need things like your flowers. Um, I mean, just before we get on to that, if you're going to uni or if you're trying to sort of save money in any way, shape, or form, if you're living with groups of people, aka a halls of residence or sharing a house, um, when you sort of study students, and I have a bit. Um, everything is structured around saving money so they can spend more on beer. Um, so, um, with that in mind, um, the only thing I can offer you is let's be really clever about how we cook. So you can share who cooks on what days. Uh, when you cook things, cook in batches. Uh, and then you can freeze the leftovers into little bags and have dinners ready and ready to go. But most importantly, instead of everyone buying different dinners on every single day, put your money together and you'll get twice as much value, okay? If you club together your money, you'll cook some incredible dishes. Um, so I think things are like tins of beans, uh, you know, flour, pasta, rices. Try and upgrade to the whole wheat varieties. That's way, way more energy, and it'll fill you up for longer. Um, vegetables down the market are really, really cheap. Stick to what's in season. It's better for you and cheaper. Um, and just kind of basics, really. Vinegars, condiments, soy sauce, Things that are going to make basic, simple foods taste unbelievable and delicious. So uh, let me just show you. Here's the flatbread, guys. You can see it's a not a complex bread at all. We go straight onto our grill, and we're just going to grill that on both sides. With our silken hummus, uh, what I'm going to do is just pour it out onto our board. This will keep in the fridge for a good handful of days. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something here. I'm going to leave some of this here, and I'm just going to put in... You can buy these jars of peppers, and they're delicious. And all the work's done for you, and they've been grilled off uh, and peeled. And I'm just going to put that in this, in this machine um, and try and kind of whiz it up. You could absolutely chop it up by hand. And we want to get like a really sweet, peppery hummus. And you can see the colour change, look at that. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of move this hummus around the board, pour in the peppery hummus, and just marble it up. And what you can do is hit that with some lovely herbs and spices. When you drag any lovely sort of veggies through that or some flatbreads it's gonna be really really good okay so let's just turn over this flatbread so you've got the chars there very simple bread all I'm gonna do now 
is just riffed off of that, you know, herbs, citrus, you know, things like feta cheese, absolutely delicious. You can put some garlic in that hummus as well, which is really, really nice. I forgot to do it. Um, that's the beauty of live broadcast. Um, that's the thing. When you make your own, you can just make it so incredibly spectacular. Small bits of parsley, big bits. Get some cayenne pepper from a hike. You know, get some nice feta cheese and just sort of break it up and have it around. Really, really nice. Um, we can get a nice simple tomato salad um, here, like that, and just clank it up and just dress it with vinegar, a little drizzle of olive oil, and um, I'm just, you know, get the seasonal tomatoes that are good right now. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I would do for a lovely snack or lunch, you know, and it takes 15 minutes, as you see. I've done my little bread, you know, just tear it up and serve that with the hummus. Really, really nice. So, you know, it's really simple. And I think that's the thing. Um, when you're kind of cooking food like this, it's not expensive. It's not, you know, tin chickpea, jarred chickpeas, you know, you know these things. It's, they're not, when you compare going to a takeaway or something like that, they're just not expensive. A um, little bit of chilli maybe in the tomatoes would be really nice. Or maybe we just have a little bit of chilli sprinkled on our hummus over here. Just have fun with it, I think. That's the kind of general idea. So I'm going to slice that up. Um, Jamie, people are asking what that book is in the background. The book? Hey! Um, that's my new cookbook, guys. Um, my Everyday Superfoods. Um, I hope you're going to love it. Um, I'm really proud of it. Um, breakfast, lunches, dinners, snacks, hydration. It's all in there. And um, it's basically every choice is a good choice. So, look, I love all foods. Um, but in this book, I wanted it to be a really safe place for you guys to be able to rely on. And when you want to have a nice day where it's good for you, everyone in there is in there. So look, I'm just going to finish plating this up, guys. A lovely little tomato salad goes on. Of course, you could hit it up with olives and nice things like that. We've got a homemade hummus rippled uh, with gorgeous sweet pepper hummus. Uh, we've got our flatbread. I'll even do another one. I'll take some questions while I finish off this last flatbread. Um, anything else you've got happening there, sweetheart? Yeah, I, think, I think something that we should explain, James, is what happening tomorrow night on telly in UK for our UK guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, just, and you know, global, it's a global issue and stuff. But. Yeah, so tomorrow I'm doing a documentary on Channel 4. It's called Sugar Rush, uh, and we're studying the impact of sugar and how sugar has affected our health in a negative way. Uh, we're kind of zeroing in on sugary sweetened drinks and the reason for that is we know sugars in all foods, of course we do, uh, and of course you can have a problem with all of those, but certainly in Britain and many countries around Europe, the largest source of sugar is, for our kids and our teenagers is from sugary sweetened drinks, um, and they're just so popular. Um, so I'm kind of telling a story about how our healthcare system is breaking down, um, about how kids going into hospital to have multiple teeth Extractions, you know, not one, not two, not three. No, that happens in the dentist. We're talking about going 26 primary school age kids going to hospital every year um, just to have like huge amounts of teeth removed for one reason only sugar. There's only one reason for teeth extraction in hospital. 26,000 kids um, a year, primary school age kids. Um, in Britain, type 2 diabetes has gone crazy. Um, uh, the cost of type 2 diabetes is, is like nearly 9 billion, which is nearly 10% of the whole NHS budget. Um, so the world's just gone a little bit mad, and I felt that it was important to tell a story about how it's affecting all sorts of people and what can we do about it and what is happening and what could happen. So really, it's, it's kind of a story where I tell you a story and then it's up to you to decide what happens next. So there's a petition at the end of it, uh, and we could put like a little link at the end of this video that goes to the petition and, and it's in a way it's the hardest petition in the world because it's trying to tell a story for the thing that we all hate which is tax but it, what I'm suggesting is a seven pence tax on a can of sugary sweetened drink which could raise a billion pounds a year to go to the NHS and to primary schools around Britain uh, for food education uh, and fight obesity basically uh, and inspire people uh, and teaching about food and where it comes from and how it affects their body 
and it's really, really important. And I'm not saying it's a perfect cure, but there is no perfect cure. And what's happening at the moment is nothing, nothing. It's just, well, it's not nothing. It's just not working. And it's not brave and it's not bold. And I think, I look, I think that the adults of the world have done our children a massive disservice. In Britain today, um, this is the first generation of kids expected to live a shorter life than their parents in 2015. What's all that about? So we're handing over a world in a much worse condition to our kids. So really, this is kind of, this is about the public taking control. So it's a tax for good. Um, it's going to cause a lot of trouble. Um, and um, hopefully people will be inspired by it, get engaged. If you're watching and if you agree that it's gone too far and there's a problem, and if you're just bored of the bad news all the time, then my belief, honestly, my belief is if we have a big, brave act of government, like a sugary drinks tax, followed by a hundred other brilliant things, and I've done a, sh a shopping list and I'm working with the government on lots of stuff, then in the next five to ten years we can start seeing an improvement and we can stop whinging about the bad times and start celebrating the good times. And anyway, back to homemade uh, hummus. Um, there we go, guys. Um, obviously, we're finishing that with a little olive oil. The whole point of it is you can grab little bits of this lovely bread and just mop it up um, and get it in your mouth. Mm. And you can get little bits of feta cheese, little bits of chilli, get it in there. Um, it's worth making your own hummus. Once you've made your own, tahini, olive oil, lemon juice, the, the lovely yoghurt, the chickpeas, flavour it with herbs or whatever you like. It's great like this, but it's amazing with like grilled meats, especially lamb is really, really good. So I've made a mess, but this is very tasty. Thank you very much for all your questions. Don't forget to watch Sugar Rush uh, in the UK, nine o'clock, Channel 4 tomorrow. Please, please, please sign the petition. We need to do something radical. Um, we can't just keep on going as we are. And thank you as ever. Love you guys. If you haven't subscribed to FoodTube, please subscribe. It's free and the whole point of it it's about finding new talent uh, and also celebrating great food. Um, so there you go. Until next time, guys. Bye.